but that's a credit to San Francisco, what was discussed earlier about the consensus that was built in the community about the respect for the workers that we have, uh, that one thing will lead to another excellent uh, development for us. Leader, would you be able to step up and speak now on the prediction of my friends? <laughs> and please don't hesitate to chime in on the subject. <laughs> you know there's not a lot of support in the, in the district for taking on their actions to the area and then the area of elevation. How do you explain uh, you know, what, what the end result we're trying to achieve there is and why it's justified this? The President of the United States has decided uh, that in keeping with our values and especially our national security, uh, that we cannot not ignore the use of chem uh, chemical weapons against the people of Syria. Uh, it is clear from the intelligence that it happened and that the responsibility for it is at the doorstep of the, uh, the uh, Assad regime in Syria. Uh, the use of chemical weapons is outside the circle of civilized human behavior. Uh, to ignore it is to uh, encourage those who have weapons of mass destruction to think that they can use them with impunity. It has been a pillar of our national security that we would deter, in fact, stop the use of weapons of mass destruction, of which chemical weapons are one. So I respect the opinion and the views of everyone on the subject. I'm very proud of the House Democratic Caucus because they have been very thoughtful uh, in the deliberations. They have suggested changes to the President's original resolution uh, to talk about narrowing the focus, uh, insisting on a short time frame, and making sure that it is um, targeted and tailored and for the purpose, for the purpose of uh, uh, deterring the use of, of, of chemical weapons. Uh, for that reason, I support the use of a, a, a strike uh, to do just that. I prefer that my members are suggesting a more narrow resolution than the President originally suggested. Such a resolution, uh, not completely, but such a resolution was passed in the Senate committee yesterday. And we look forward to seeing how they go forward. And uh, again, I'm very proud of many of us, none of us wants to use force. The President does not make this decision, uh, take this decision lightly. Uh, so it, it is, uh, I think it should be obsolete. The use of force should be uh, uh, not even considered as a use of how to resolve conflict. But the fact is, if we're going to keep the American people safe, if we're going to deter the use of future use of weapons of mass destruction, we have to say this cannot spread. So we'll see how it goes. And again, I'm, I'm proud of the, uh, although again, everyone has unease about using what, um, uh, force, uh, that our members have channeled uh, their concerns into a more uh, tailored resolution that I think will have more acceptance. Leader Pelosi, you called um, Obama's, uh, President Obama's uh, move to bring this to Congress a sign of strength, but the polls show most Americans don't support the action and they also don't understand, uh, they don't think the President has explained clearly why uh, you have to do, you know, take action in Syria. So what does he have to do moving forward? It is important uh, for the mayor, as President Lincoln said, public sentiment is everything. And while uh, it's very hard to move people to a place where they would say, okay, we score. And I'm proud of the American people for their resistance to it. It's based on a number of things. There was a gross misrepresentation of what was uh, the motivation for use of force uh, in Iraq. And people feel that they were burned uh, by that administration. Uh, at the time, I said, as the senior Democrat on the Intelligence Committee, the intelligence does not support the threat. They said, are you saying that the administration is not telling the truth? I said, the intelligence does not support the threat. My members overwhelmingly joined me in voting against the initiation of hostilities in Iraq. In this case, the intelligence does uh, clearly prove that Assad used weapons of mass destruction, chemical weapons against the people of Syria, including over 400 children. 
That's again barbarian, barbaric outside the cycle, the circle of, uh, of civilized behavior. And I, I, I agree with you. I think the president has to make a clear case that he, that he did do it. Assad regime is responsible, A, and B, that this will be a limited, tailored, focused attack for the purpose of deterring future use of weapons of mass destruction. And I think that his values on the subject will be very important for the American people to hear. Uh, he did not draw this line in the sand. This isn't about Obama drawing a line. This is about humanity drawing a line decades ago after the atrocities of World War I because of chemical weapons, draw, uh, drawing that, that line which Assad should not have crossed. But again, it's difficult, and again, it's hard because it's very emotional. None of us, again, uh, wants to use force or initiate the use of force. Uh, but uh, again, there's an equity to be weighed, and that equity is about sending a message to Assad and others who consider the use of this weapon. You're right, the president needs to make the case more clearly to the American people about why and that this is a situation. People talk to us, say, oh, go to war, well, we're not going to war, we're making a strike. And that is really an important distinction. Thank you very much. Media tours are available, check in please over at the desk. Thank you all for coming. I'm at the house with me.